What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how you can use a remote on your phone to control OBS Studio on your computer. While there are a couple of apps and programs that do this already, plugins, etc., this one seems to be the most built out by far. So let's go ahead and install it and see what it can do. Obviously, you'll need OBS installed and set up. Assuming it is already set up, we need to go ahead and download a plugin before we download the app from either the iOS or Google Play Store. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the official plugin, OBS WebSocket. If you don't already have this, you'll need to head across here and on the right hand side under releases, click the latest release here. Then we'll scroll down to the bottom here and we'll choose the Windows installer or Mac OS if you're on Mac. Then simply open up the installer, click run, and you'll need to close out of OBS for now. Click next, select the same place where you currently have OBS Studio installed and click next, then next and install. If you have OBS open, you'll need to close it here. So I'll jump through to after the install with my recording. The next time you start up OBS Studio, you'll see a pop-up like this. It looks like you're running OBS WebSocket. Would you like to configure a password? Simply click yes. Then we'll need to enter a port by default 4444. If you have a firewall installed, you'll need to go ahead and allow this through it. Otherwise, if you don't have a firewall, things should work as is. Then for a password, you can set literally whatever you'd like here. Then I'll click OK and now it should be set up. Inside of OBS Studio, I can click Tools at the very top and you should see WebSockets service settings. This takes us back here where we can change the password and or port later on. For now, because I use ESET, I'll go ahead and drop my firewall so this can be accessed from my phone. Later on, I'll allow port 4444 through it. And of course, if you're using something like the Windows firewall or a third party firewall, you'll need to let it through there. Now, let's go ahead and get to the second half of the tutorial, installing the app on your mobile device. Both tablets and phones are supported here. This web page will be linked down in the description below. Conex OBS Blade. OBS Blade is the name of the program that we'll be using and it uses OBS WebSocket. They have a couple of images here and all the way down at the bottom, we have iOS and Google Play download links. Head across to whichever one you'll need, such as iOS for iPad, iPhone, or of course the Google Play Store for your Android. I have an Android, so I'll go ahead and install it here. Once it's installed, we'll need to open up our mobile device and start up the app. When OBS Blade starts up, simply click through the tutorial at the very beginning, telling us to install the OBS WebSocket, which we already have. And if you see something like this telling you to download a specific version, simply make sure you have the correct version installed. If I pull across the OBS WebSocket download we were at earlier, it's 4.9.1, the latest release. This one's in June 2021, so more than likely it'll still be that for you. Finally, after installing, we'll need to make sure that it looks like the above, where we need to lock server to only using IPv4. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll pull it across, Tools, WebSockets, Server Settings, and lock to IPv4. There we go. Then we can click Start. Now it's trying to auto-discover our computer, and if it finds it, it'll pop up on this list. If you don't see your computer automatically pop up, make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network, or of course the same router as your computer is, and it should then automatically pop up. If you don't see it, click manual and you'll need to enter the IP address and password of your computer over here. To do so, we can hold start and press R, then inside of here, type CMD and hit enter. Inside of the command prompt, we can type IP config and upon hitting enter, we'll see a bunch of results. One of them will be our internal IP address over here. So now that it's pumped up here, I'll click it to expand it and I'll enter my password. Then I'll click connect. Upon doing so, you'll see a notification on your computer and I'll save it here. I'll give it a name, say Techno and save. Now you should see your current scene items and audio settings over here that we can control from our mobile device, which makes life quite a bit easier. Of course, we can scroll through them and adjust things as necessary. On top of this, we can click this button to get a preview, though it may result in higher battery usage or OBS itself suffering performance issues. If we click OK, we'll see what our computer sees over here inside of the app. This can be rather useful and it's not too delayed to say the least. But now I'll leave this closed. On top of this, we can customize the fading time at the very top and scrolling down to the bottom, we have widgets, including chat for Twitch chat and YouTube chat, as well as statistics over here for OBS and our computer while we're recording and on the second tab over here, miscellaneous, which are slightly different things that may be useful to you or may not. So if I start recording over here, you can see the recording light goes green at the very top 
and there doesn't seem to be any performance information here, which is a little bit odd, but maybe this is for streams only. Makes sense. Awesome. Stop streaming. And at the very top, we can change the scene. Of course, I just have one scene called Untitled. And in the three dots in the very top right, we can choose Start Streaming, Start Recording, Edit Scene Visibility, and Edit Connection at the very bottom. So it's really functional. On the Statistics tab at the very bottom, we have some info about our latest stream and previous streams. I, of course, don't stream, so I'm not able to show you anything here. And finally, the Settings tab at the very bottom. We can choose to keep this screen active. We can manage data. Choose what we'd like to see on the dashboard, scene collections, streaming, recording controls, studio mode, and tablet mode at the very bottom. I'll enable recording controls and we'll head back to the dashboard. As you can see, we have a start button and I assume we'll have a stop button too. So pulling across OBS, start, and yes, it has started recording here. We can pause and of course we can stop it as well. The same thing will go for streaming controls as well, and studio mode over here will expose some extra settings inside of OBS Blade. So we have a studio mode tick box that upon ticked, we get the transitions and we should see other scenes here as well. I'll switch off scene preview and studio mode as I won't really be using those. Then we have a custom themes where we can choose one from the predefined themes over here, or we can scroll down and add our custom themes over here. I'll enable it and the theme that we choose here will be used immediately on our device, which is quite nice. I'll head back and scrolling down even further, we have about the tutorial slides if you ever get confused on how to connect it and at the very bottom support, blacksmith and tip job. Blacksmith lets us customize the app a bit further and it's sort of a donation. The tip charm is also a place for more direct donations. That's really about it for OBS Blade. Super simple. It works really well, and of course it saves our connections to get to different computers really easily. As long as you've made sure that you've allowed the OBS WebSocket port through your firewall, you should have no issues using this app whenever OBS Studio is open. It's really useful and something I may start using if I come around to streaming again, but then again, having the audio controls is rather useful for me. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.